Hello students, how are you all? I welcome you all to the class. Till date we have studied about motion in a plane and I have told you also about relative motion. In relative motion we have talked about the river road problem, the rain man problem and we also discussed about graphical representation of certain variables like xt graph and vt graph and then I showed some example how you can make other graphs using some given graph. And I know that you would have, you would have practiced problems and the understanding would be very simple in your mind, the concept would be very much clear with you all. Let's go today, let's not limit ourselves with only studying motion in a straight line. Today we'll start studying motion in a two-dimensional plane, that is, in a two-dimensional space, that is, let, let us take an example. Suppose I have this chalk holder and if I throw it, it will come back. This was, it was following a straight line path, it again came back along the same straight line path. So such is the motion in a straight line. Now suppose I throw the chalk making some angle with the horizontal, like say in this way. So this time it is not moving along the straight line but there is some other kind of path but certainly it's not a straight line path. So we can say this chalk holder moved along a two dimensional direction or let's say it moved in a plane. And suppose let us say a fly, a fly is flying in space, a fly will be flying in space, it will be moving along the three dimensional space or let's say the, all the three coordinates, all the three position coordinates will be varying with time. Generally how we can depict motion in two dimension you can see here. Let me draw a graph representing the displacement along the vertical direction and along the horizontal direction. Along the horizontal direction we are mentioning by x, along the vertical direction I am mentioning by y. Let us say the trajectory, the path followed by the particle is somewhat like this. Let us say it is going along a path given by this way. That is the y coordinate and x coordinate are related as per this curve. Now suppose at some time t the particle is at this point a. Let us say at some time t1, the particle at this point a, its coordinates are given as x1, y1. After some time, that is at time t2, let us say the particle reached point b and its coordinates are given as x2, y2. Now this point, let us say this is x1, this will be x2 and similarly we can also mention about the y coordinates that will be y1 here and that will be y2 here. This was all about, we can see the path is not a straight line, it's a different path but not a straight line. Now this is actually the trajectory, by trajectory we mean the path followed by the particle. Now let's say during some moment, at some moment, during some instant of time, at some instant of time, the particle is somewhere here. Let us say the particle is somewhere here, its coordinate is given as x, y, the general coordinate. Now the particle is trying to move along this path. That is its net velocity will be directed along this path, along the tangent of the curve. So we may write one more point, direction of the particle is along the tangent of the curve, direction of particle is along the tangent of the curve. First point we got, first point we got, how can you find out the direction? The direction is very simple that you can make out, it's along the tangent of the curve that we have drawn while showing how the particle is moving in space. Second thing, same will be the direction of velocity, just now I told you, the velocity will be directed along this direction, so I am mentioning this by velocity vector v. Now if I resolve the velocity along the two directions, those will be the components of this velocity along x direction we can mention by vx and along y direction we can mention by vy. So we got, we got that vx is the component of velocity along horizontal direction and vy is the component of velocity along the vertical direction, if we mention this as angle theta, what theta will signify, theta will give us an idea, theta will give us an idea about the direction of the particle, how it is moving, you see this diagram and easily you can make out that tan theta is equal to Vy by Vx, that is very clear from the diagram, what we obtain theta is equal to tan inverse vy by vx. Actually with this theta we can specify the direction along which the particle is moving in the space. Theta is equal to tan inverse vy by vx. Now how can you give the position at some particular instant of time that will be given by the coordinates, the x coordinate and y coordinate that will signify the position of the particle in the space. Direction will be given by the angle theta and that is actually tan inverse vy by vx. So let's come to some point. First thing, direction, 
that is actually theta that will be tan inverse vy by vx first point x and y are obviously the coordinates of the position the position coordinates of the particle second thing let's talk about acceleration acceleration of the particle and let us see what is the acceleration of the particle as it moves now see we all know that we all have learned acceleration is actually the rate of change of velocity now see as the particle is moving in a two dimensional space it's moving along two in a plane so it will be having x coordinate and y coordinate and it's having a velocity along horizontal direction and velocity along vertical direction so acceleration will be also having two components so acceleration along x axis acceleration can be divided into two components acceleration along x axis that comes out to be you may check this i mentioned this by ax and we know as acceleration is rate of change of velocity this can be written as ax is equal to dvx by dt first thing we got this second thing acceleration along y axis so i'm mentioning here acceleration along y axis see what will it is very simple i know you are all thinking in the right way the acceleration along y axis will come out to be dvy upon dt we got two things we got two things but one thing don't get confused if let's say acceleration along ax is somewhere like this don't don't get confused that please make a correction in your mind if ax is here ay is here and if you think that if you think that the net acceleration is somewhere here that's right and that this angle is let's say phi don't confuse it with theta that already we have given for the direction for direction remember you have to see what is the angle between uh, vy and vx what is the angle actually between the net velocity and vx that is the actual direction of the particle this is not do not use this for direction do not use this for direction so do take caution do not use for direction so one caution that you need to take for theta signifying the direction do not take that tan inverse a y by a x will be the direction of the particle while moving in space this was all about velocity and acceleration let's come and understand about the trajectory of the particle now you see here i was saying this is the path followed by the particle if I use the term trajectory of the particle. So what is trajectory? Trajectory is actually an equation which will give you the relation between x coordinate and y coordinate. So trajectory followed by the particle. Trajectory of particle, you can say also an object. Generally we will see this in a better way when I teach you our projectile motion. Before that, let me tell you how are you going to find out trajectory of a particle. Let us say, let us say the y coordinate is varying and the x coordinate is also varying. The relation, the equation, the equation having relation, the equation having relation or showing relation, having relation between y and x is actually the trajectory of particle having relation between y and x is trajectory or equation of particle is trajectory or equation of particle okay so you can find out what trajectory is followed by the particle by finding a relation between x coordinate and y coordinate so generally how we do it generally how we do it you will given x is varying with some relation y is varying with some relation generally it will be given as x is varying with some time in with some time and y is also varying with respect to time the equation will provide it try to eliminate time from one of the equation and try to find a relation between y and x see we will this understand how to find the direction how to find the trajectory how to find the acceleration with one equation with one example that i'm going to show you just now Let's come to the example showing the relation between x and y and let us find the direction of the particle. Let us do an example to understand the concept that we have just done. Let us say a particle is moving in space that is along x direction and y direction such that the x coordinate or let's say the velocity along the x direction f 
is equal to vector sum of all the forces acting on the object. There may be n number of forces I'm mentioning in this way. So you can replace all the forces with one force, which is the resultant of all the forces. This is all about force. Now, what force can do? What force can do? Force can bring certain kind of changes in the motion of body, which I'm going to write here. Hope you have noted down here. What kind of changes it may bring on an object? So let me write down the effects of force. So effects of force, all this all you would have, you would have experienced. First of all, a force can, the first effect, a force can change the state of body. That is, it can bring a body in rest to in motion and it can change the state of motion to a state of rest. So what it can do? It can change the state. So first thing, change in state. So what we can write, change in state? A force can bring a body in motion from rest. Bring a body bring a body in motion from a state of rest means it will change the state of rest to state of motion bring a body in motion from a state of rest so that is what a force can do and that's very simple that's very simple you can see that if i if i have this duster as you can see if i have this duster then suddenly if, if this is at rest if i apply a force then this will be starting moving this will start moving and so the force effect is actually nothing it's what it is doing it's actually changing the state from a state of rest to a state of motion let us talk about the next thing that it can do it can change the direction of motion so it can change the direction now if i write it change the direction what do i mean here it can change the direction suppose a cricket ball a baller is balling and the ball reaches covering a parabolic path and it reaches to the batsman now if the batman, batsman hits the ball he can direct the ball to any other direction that is he is applying a force that force is actually changing the direction of ball so what it can do it can change the direction of an object if you kick the football along towards left towards right making some angle with the horizontal anywhere you are actually changing the direction of the ball by applying a force so what force can do it can change the direction of an object changes the direction of motion of an object changes the direction of motion of an object now let's talk more let's not stop here let's talk more about what force can do the third thing most of you would have would, would have played with a canvas ball or with a football actually you see here if you if you throw a canvas ball on ground you'll find that it will hit the ground it will get deformed during the instant during the moment of time when it is in touch with the ground again due to its property of resilience it will regain its structure and it will rebound similarly if you kick a football just at the time of kicking with your leg the football gets deformed although in a very small amount but it deforms and again it gains regains in structure and then it moves away so what we what we can do it can deform a body deform an object a thing that can be noticed you all can notice this if you take an object if you take an object and you exert force on this like let's say let me have let me have this a piece of rubber i'm having it's a duster here the duster pad i'm having if i exert a force on this i can deform its shape you can see here i can easily deform its shape this is one thing by applying a force you can see there are many things of whose shape can be deformed by applying a force and I, and I told you, for example, if you take the example of a ball. So see here, <coughs> if a ball strikes ground, its shapes gets deformed while the instant it is in touch with ground. Later on, again, it gets rebounded and again, it regains its original shape. 
So that's the effect that force can cause by, by deforming the shape of a ball. This is what the force effect can do. This is all about basics of force, what we have learned. Force can be classified into two as contact force and non-contact force. Contact force is one in which the two bodies have to be in contact with each other to exert the force. Non-contact force, no contact is required for the force to exert an effect, to make an effect fail, feel. I also told you force can have a push or pull effect. By pushing, if you push an object, you will move the object further ahead. If you pull it, you are pulling it towards. And again, you can, if, if uh, at your home you would have tried this, you would have pushed a table, you have pulled a table. All these are examples of push and pull effect of a force. Then I told you you have applied many forces on an object. You can replace all, you, you need not to apply all these forces. You can replace all these forces by a single force. And this single force should be the vector resultant of all the forces. So we got this, we got this, you can, that is called principle of superposition. Now let's come to the first important thing of the class. This is all the short introduction about the chapter about force. Now let us come to the first part that is Newton's first law of motion, which you are all very well aware of, but I'm going to just give you a quick recap of what do you know and just you can just brush up the idea of Newton's law of motion and we are going to discuss about first law of motion. Let me give you an idea. Although this might be uh, a common and very normal statement for you all, Newton's laws of motion are the fundamental laws. Okay, and this is actually, it works on for macroscopic motion. I mean, uh, it is not applicable where the velocity of objects reaches to a very high value and if the velocity, if, if it reaches to the nearly the velocity of light and if we talk about very small objects like the uh, whose size are nearly the size of atom, their Newton's laws are not applicable. We will see what laws are uh, they are applicable when we read about quantum physics. But in this uh, case, we are going to study about Newton's law that is applicable on finite such object and which are moving with finite velocities, not with a large velocity that is uh, comparable to the velocity of light. We are not going to do uh, deal in such cases right now. So let us talk about Newton's first law of motion. Newton's First law of motion. You all must be knowing that the statement of this. Before giving you the statement, let me give you some idea. 